I had a very handsome young man who came to me when I was at the Federally Qualified Health Center and he broke down and said he was addicted to heroin. He was stuck. And when he wasn't doing heroin, he was doing Oxycontin. And he'd crush up the pills and snort them and crush up the pills and inject them. And he needed to get off everything because he wanted to go in the service and do military police and then come back and become a Michigan State Trooper. And he knew that he wasn't going to go anywhere this way. His girlfriend's mother was a drug addict. His mother was a drug addict. He used drugs with his girlfriend. His father was in prison in California for drug-related crimes. And his aunt was my patient, and she was abusing drugs until I found her diverting and I had to discharge her because she wouldn't follow the rules. And I said, this is just, this is all family wrapped up. And it, it, is it genetic or is it learned or is it both? And I tried treating him with a drug called Suboxone. It worked really well. But when your mother gives you heroin for your birthday, that's a problem. And he died when he used heroin on his birthday. You see young people cut down in their youth. On many occasions, we end up picking up the same patient repeatedly. The biggest reasoning behind that is there's not a good network in place for narcotics and addiction problems, right? So there's a nationwide and certainly locally problem with getting addicted people into programs to help them. Um, the emergency department obviously isn't the scenario to do that. And many of these patients don't have primary care physicians. So even if they're admitted to the hospital because they're that bad, um, there's an assigned physician for them, but they don't have a follow-up primary care physician and the cure is obviously a long-term, lifelong problem that you have to deal with. That's where the disconnect occurs and why we're seeing these rates and these repeat offenders. The medical system did not have a clue how to help this guy. And I treat addiction and then they treat me like a leper. So there's a continuing circle of discrimination and stigma offered by major healthcare corporations and local hospitals that don't open up and say, we have some public accountability, we need to reach out and work on this. Now, that's not true everywhere. Spectrum Health has a good system. University of Michigan has a system. And Wayne State has a methadone clinic. But there's 194 hospitals in the state, and maybe seven or eight of them have faculty and staff that work in addiction and understand the principles that we have as national best standards. And the others uh, say that it doesn't make any money.